We live in a world where most of the products that we consume or use are made in a factory. In most factories, they use an assembly line. An assembly line is a series of workers and machines by which a succession of identical items are progressively assembled. In the capital city of Jackson, Mississippi, we had an incredible assembly line of coaches. Coaches like Anna Jackson, Wayne Brent, Luther Riley, and Thomas Billups, who helped make some of the greatest basketball players the state has ever seen. Players like James Hollywood Robinson, Mo Williams, Juanita Ward, and Monte Ellis, just to name a few. Where were these players assembled and made? At a place we call the JPS Basketball Factory. Nice to be back at my old stomping grounds, baby. As I look back, bring back a lot of memories. Hey, man, you look like you're in great shape, man. You look like you can still put them up today. Do you still play? I, actually, I do. I actually play, um, you know, coaching the team. So, you know, and uh, I coach a lot of youngsters. So, and then when you're coaching the youngsters, you have to show them how to do the drill. So you can't be, you know, overweight. You got to be on point with them. Yeah. When you walked into this gym, I'm, I'm sure it brought back a lot of memories. Tell, tell us about maybe one of the games that, that you can remember here that just kind of stands out a little bit more than any other. It was one of them games where we, we beat somebody. I forgot the name of the team, but it was a low scoring game. It wasn't like Merle basketball. We beat them like the score was like 15 to 17. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> one of those games. It was, it was one of those games I remember it was a, a, a white team. They was kind of slow, but they knew how to press and they knew how to play the game. But they knew they couldn't beat us athletic, athletically. So they slowed the game down real, real slow. I remember halftime, the score was like 9-5. Nine to, nine to Because I remember my first time ever meeting Coach Jordan. My uh, sister played for the basketball team. So I was in the uh, ninth grade, and that's the year that Murrah went 41-1. and one. And Coach Jordan, I remember coming over here right down here playing with the girls, and they, Miss Jackson, they only had nine players, right? This is the true story. So she came to me and asked me and said, hey, I need you to come down here and play with the girls. So I just looked at her like, but this is Merle. I'm like, yeah, let's go, 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 go. So I was, as I was down there practicing, I guess I impressed Coach Jordan. Coach Jordan asked Coach Brown to go down there and say, who was that kid? I said, that's Patricia, uh, Patricia's uh, grandbrother. So when I did that, and he came, and he, this, hey, I'm Coach Jordan. I'm telling him he was almost like a, like a, like a, he was already a father figure. He was like this big and his voice and everything was just so, it carried so hard where you, you paid attention to what he said. And at that point, I was hooked and then he invited me to travel with the team just to go see the team play. And that was the best thing for me in my life. Cause I was doing the wrong things and all that stuff. That changed my life. Averaging 42 points a game, there had to be several games where you were just in, in a zone. You, you know that, that proverbial zone? Oh yeah. Talk, talk to us about what it felt like to average 40 a game and be in that zone on, on, on several occasions. Well, uh, but that particular year, I knew I was shooting the ball real well. Me and Coach Brown, we worked really hard that summer on my shot. I really developed a shot, and I believe in, like, when I, when I shoot the ball, I try to get that same feeling over and over. So when I shoot it and I feel that feeling, I ain't even got to look at it going. Because I know it automatically go in because you can just feel it from, you know, getting up so many shots. I remember one particular game we played, uh, um, I hit 66 points. And right. I came out of the game with like four minutes left in it. And I didn't start shooting the ball until like the, the third and fourth quarter. All the fans and everybody always knew my play. They call it seven, seven, seven. <laughs> so that's when I come down and either pick off the high picks and I come off, I'm telling you, once I got up and shot, you can hear the, the fans. Woo! Just that, that feeling. So that, that, that carried, made me, not really, that made me believe in myself, that I knew I could do it. I knew I could put up 40 points. These young cats uh, at Callaway, just scoring the ball. You got Deshaun Ruffin, guys scoring a lot of points, man, and, and making big plays, you know, Malik Newman. Uh, what about in your era? Do you have some guys that you think that can compare 
work with those guys? Well, I certainly do because the first thing I have to start with, I have to start with that gentleman in the corner who's our leading scorer. Okay. Who's the leading scorer in the city. Okay. Well, we had a big three back then. This was 72, 73. Okay. And I'm going to say, I'm not going to say arguably. I'm going to stand here and say the best team ever came through California. Oh, man. Wow. That's I, I'm not going to argue. I'm going to yeah, okay. yeah, right, yeah. okay. Because I'm going to put that team up against he, he, for several reasons. Once, we played defense. Okay. All right. You know, okay. we played on a team that if you didn't play defense, you didn't, didn't hit the floor. We had a coach that in his first time out, when you come off the floor, you know who he would ask you? What's it? What defense they? Okay. Right. Meaning the other team. Okay. If you could not recognize what defense they in, you didn't play. Okay. He sent you to the end of the bench. So we played yeah. defense first. Yeah. Then we scored. Right, okay. And uh, we had one of the best press I have ever seen. Okay. To this man here. We were down 20 down there in Macomb. And uh, him and Marcella Singleton brought us all the way back. Right. See, I can say this because we had a record of 43 and 3. And we were going 33 in the row before we We were 33 and 0 before yeah, we lost our first game. First game. Okay. Yeah, they don't yeah. even play for the games. Really. <laughs> they can't play for they the games. Right, 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 right. So we lost three games by a total, a grand total of nine points. Nine, nine points. Gotcha. Yes. What, what, if you look at, if you can remember, I know y'all remember. What scoring wise at the end of the game, what, 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 what was the scores like? Well, I mean, you know, we had some games where, you know, we, we, we beat one team 100 to 40. Mm -hmm. You know, he, he, we got a lot of history over here. Like I said, he was the leading scorer in the city without a three-point line. We didn't have a three-point line back then. Right. But he shot some fours. <laughs> 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 Him and uh, 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 a guy from uh, Moore named Coach Jordan. Yeah. God rest his soul named Tyrone Smith. Okay. They battled for the lead score in the city. He beat him out. Right. Without a three point line. Without a three point line. I was about 30 when it first started. Yeah. But they started playing me at Boxing War. Oh, so yeah. I had to change jersey. How many times? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we we, we, we walked in the gym. Play. Yeah, we walked in the gym. It's day is, day is, day is. 45. Yeah, day is on 45. Yeah. You see on those posters out there, he wearing 52. Yeah. Right. So they, they, he was changing the jersey like, because the yeah, yeah, scouting team, they brought the scouting team. And he had about 10, 15 points before they realized who he is. They called the time out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, back then, I, I didn't know what a box and a wolf was. Right, right. right. What they doing? They catch me at the time I hit. I said, oh, man, it's on now. Yeah. They fall into the bathroom. Right. right. <laughs> it was all good. Yeah. It was all good. Let me see that, boy. Uh, oh, yeah. I think there you go. At the end, I, 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 I ended up having about 18 points a, a game. Yeah, all the all the mm -hmm. Okay, all right. Like I said, without a three-point line. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, so team-wise, I know uh, Palmer, you've been around. You, you watch high school basketball. I know you. Both y'all go to high school games now. Team-wise, okay. Uh, not only uh, Callaway team, but you say right. you put this team up against any team. Any team, Jackson. like I said, the only team that I would digress to is that little team that went undefeated. Okay. Yeah, that, that team uh, back in, they knew that, I think they were, what were they? They were, uh, you know, the Billy Joe, Arthur Brown, Arthur Brown, Arthur Brown, Arthur Brown, 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 that's the only team I'm gonna take a back seat to, Coach Sanders. Yeah. <laughs> I can't do no more respect. You got a, you got a better nah. respect than me, cause you just seen both. Uh, nah, nah, yeah. nah, nah. He played on heck of a team now. Right. right. Oh, yeah. yeah, he did. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. yeah. 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 Well, he yeah. played on the heck of a team. I was yeah. in the Coliseum watching when they when they, when they won too. Yeah. Right. I know we talked about the big three, the big three yeah. in the NBA. And we, we had some big threes way in, in oh, yeah. high school games. Too. Back in high school, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. the pro line posse. Yeah, right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Talk, talk to me about y'all big three, uh, uh, Paul. Our big three were George White, Marcella Singleton, and Commander Dollywall. Okay. I have to spell that for you because he was pure Indian. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Played point guard for us, and I'm still waiting on him to miss a free throw. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm still waiting on him to turn the ball up because you couldn't steal the ball from him. He was just he, that far. He had a good attitude. He uh, came in, he said, he wanted to start. He yeah. said, what, what did it take for me to start? <laughs> yeah. He did. He was just that. But then he came, he came to Callaway uh, uh, to, uh, 
play tennis. Right, right. And pass by the gym and decide to go out for basketball. Right, sure. And then it'll be a two year start. Right, sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, now, Cobrin, Cobrin out there now. Cobrin yeah. coached some good teams at Callaway. Yeah, he did. Right. He was right. good as well. Don't ride a posse. Come on here, Cobrin. Come on here, Cobrin. Come on here, Cobrin. Come on here, Cobrin. Hey, 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 Wayne, we're talking about the, the big threes. You know, we're talking about the, the NBA big threes, and we're talking about the pro line posse. Talk to us a little bit about the program possible. Man, yeah. I, I need can I can I get three of them right now? <laughs> <laughs> I need three of them right. I'm looking for three of them. Yeah. <laughs> I, I know I can't get no haircut. <laughs> <laughs> I know you ain't gonna do that. Yeah. Hey, what you doing, man? Man, I'm, I'm learning, man. Getting what a little you, bit more history. What you got on? Man, I got this, <laughs> man, you know, I got this. Uh, I bought this a couple years ago. And uh, I just never wore it, just got okay. it, just collect this item, and then when they called me about this, I said it'd be a good time to put it on. Yeah. 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 So, uh, you know, just yeah. wait and remember my boy. Yeah, yeah. You, got, yeah. you got the size that you wore in high school, too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that, you, know, you, know, man, uh, you know what, though? Uh, I was in there, and I was uh, in the cleaning my closet, and I found some of my old Miss shorts. And the fact that we still can fit those shorts, like at the, at the size I am now, the right, boy, yeah. that's stuff big, man. Yeah. And I'm looking over here, how boy, y'all the exact opposite yeah. smile. Uh -huh. so, yeah. like, yeah. Take a picture of that, because I, I, I want to make a disclaimer right now. The short shorts come yeah. back. They come back. Oh, they already is. Yeah. You know how the girl they they already is. Short yeah. Yeah. Stuff. Oh, that's yeah. already yeah. is. I told them in the color scene, I said, that, that look right there, they laughed at us. It's coming listen, back. Bro. I had a, I had a boy 16 this, this, this uh, year. He, 16, 270. He wanted me to order him a large. They wear the short now again. You know, they don't, they, if it's too long, they gonna talk about you. Right, right. You know, I still yeah. come to the gym, my long pooper shorts on. They, right. They say, Coach, you got on shorts or pants. Right. <laughs> so you know, but now the styles, it, it, you know, it just come back around. Oh, everything come back. It just come back around. Everything come back around. Yeah. That's a library right here. Used to be like the computer rooms. I'm talking about this thing still the same. The thing we used to go in here with art. No art downstairs. Now this is my middle school. Yep. That's how I do it. I practice with you. This is when I first started playing tennis. At. That's the, that's the football practice we right there. Going to the gym. Here you go, right here. Look, this thing big to me. Huh? They ain't changed them backboards, still got them wood backboards up there. You see they painted the bleachers. Sweet, sweet. You see, you see what Daddy started at? Huh? You see what Daddy started at? Hey, mm -hmm. Being in these these hallways, and I always had a dream, and my dream was to make it as far as I can and get to the NBA. So I put in the work and the time to get there. So it's just all my hard work that paid off and, you know, it just led me to here. You know, Monte, we're here at, at Rowan Middle School where you walk these hallways and got whooped by the front school. <laughs> Did you know that one day that we would be back here, you know, talking about how great Monte Ellis, you know, was? Nah, I, I didn't. Imagine being here, but I did know that one day I was gonna get interviewed because I I, I I set my mind and I applied myself and I put in the time and the work for me to become the player that I was and was able to fight off all the distraction that was around me and still be able to focus and get there. So I always knew it that I was gonna be here one day. I didn't know he was gonna be at Rowan doing it though. You know, let, let's dig a little deeper. Let's go a little deeper into that thought process. Mm -hmm. 
when exactly, how old were you when you realized, man, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of special. I, I, I got a real shot at this thing. Uh, I, I never looked at myself for being special because I had to work. So my oldest brother, uh, Antoine, played basketball before me. He played with Billups and I was the, the ball boy. So he inspired a lot into me. So only thing I did was just train, play basketball. And so the more I did that, the better I got. When I got into high school is when I decided to separate myself because, you know, I seen a couple guys coming out of high school like Travis Outlaw, Al Jefferson, and those guys. And I was like, hey, if they can go to the league out of high school and out of from where they from, then I can do the same thing. So what I did was I just worked, just continued to work, and it just paid off. I didn't think I was special. I had to work. Like, really, really, really had to work. Speaking of your high school, as you just been in because um, those guys definitely great players. Who in the city of Jackson did you say, I got to really bring my A game in high school with somebody that you said, man, I got to, like, he coming at me tonight. Or, you know, who were a couple guys in the city? I ain't never, I ain't never felt no, I ain't never viewed nobody like that. When I came, we, we just had a lot of good basketball. Like, it was a lot of teams that when you play, you had to bring your A game. You know, Jim Hill, Forest Hill, Wingfield, Provine, Callaway, uh, Merle. So, like, every week that you played, it was going to be an exciting game, especially around in the city in JPS, because we all played basketball in the summer, so it was more like a bragging type thing. And so, when the season came, everybody was like, you know, we going at them. And then we was the we was the powerhouse, so everybody wanted to beat us anyway. So everybody brought their A game against us. So the only thing we had to do was just go out there and just play our game. It wasn't one person. I never try to go tit for tat with another player. I, I never been that player. I only worry about me and what I'm going to do and then, man, with the team that I have, and we're going to go that way. I never just like, oh, I got to go. Nah, I never did. I just played basketball. So, okay, you know, I, I, can't, I can't let that slide. I, gotta, <laughs> I need you to give me, like, you can't. Like, everybody got, because I was a hooper, uh -huh. you know, about 200 pounds ago. Mm -hmm. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, there, was there anybody like that? Like, did you just... That's why I said, like, when we, like, our biggest games was probably against Provine. Okay. I mean, but even with that, like, it wasn't like one player. Like, I've never looked at Provine and be like, oh, I'm playing against Charlie White and I got a dude. I never looked at the game like that. It's like, it's another game. I know we got a tough opponent and they gonna come and hit us with everything they got. So we just got to go play our game. I never like go talk about me in the one-on-one. -on -one. Nah, I never did that. But we had great games though. What was some of the, like, when you think back, can you name your, maybe your top three games that you remember? Uh, in high school? Yeah, in high school. What, what would be like in the JPS? Let's go JPS. Yeah. Then when you go, you know. Um, in JPS, it was always Provine, number one. Number two, probably when I had 72 parts against um, Greenwood. Let, let's go back to that, because here's the thing. You know, um, I, that, that was very interesting to me. You go to a place, your first, let's go back to the first game. You mm -hmm. had 65 in the ring. Yeah. Where was that game? Lanier. Okay, so that was at the mix. So you had 65. So now the next game is at Greenwood. Yep. So I know they had to be thinking, dude, you ain't get no 65 this time. Talk talk me through both of those games <laughs> and what was being said. And then how in the world you score 72 points in the 32 minute game? <laughs> All right, well, the first game we was at at home. The first half, I had like 15 points in the first half. And um, the coach, and then we was only up probably maybe like six, maybe six or eight at the time. And 
coach was, they coach was, I'm talking about, he was geeked, he was fired up. And when, when I'm going to the locker room, it's like how Lanier is, if you walk into the back, you go into the locker room. Our locker room is to the right, the visitor locker room to the left, but you have to pass each other to go into the locker room. Well, the coach stood out in the hallway while his players, all of them had went in, and I'm walking back, me, Cole Billup, and Coach James. And he was standing in the hallway, just was yelling to his players inside, I told y'all, I told y'all, he put his pants on just like we, he, he human just like we are. And I just walked past him, I said, we'll see second half. So then, when they go in the second half, then I just, I just snapped. So I ended up having 50 in the second half. So we go to Greenwood, like I think like a couple of days later, because I think we played them first on a Tuesday and then end up playing them again on Friday in the same week. So when we go down there, they cry already talking to us. Like, you ain't gonna get 65 today. You might get 17. I told them which quarter. So at that time, the this Chitter Chat had already talked. So at this time, now I'm like, all right, I gotta do something. Then on top of that, I had got a tip that I had three NBA scouts in the building. So I was like, okay. When I first came out the first half, what people don't know is I was in foul trouble. So the first half, like the end of the second quarter, I set out maybe the last two minutes in the first half. And then I came back out the second half. Coach Bill was like, he was like, if you're gonna break the record, go and break it. Like, don't be playing around. He was like, if you're gonna play around, then I just take you out. So then I just got serious and did that, and then he took me out towards the end. That Seven. was it. Like, now back then, I don't know, well, the three point was around you, right? Mm -hmm. How many threes you had again, you remember? I think like 13. So when the game was over, those same people, what was the react, like, what was the buzz, like, what was the... Oh, this changed. The whole, the whole gym changed by then. By the time when I was doing all, now everybody on my side, every time I make it, you'll think I was at home. So it was, it had changed. I changed the whole narrative of that whole thing. Back at your career, your overall career, is that one of your, is that in your top five moments as individual moments as far as, you know, something you did in the game? Uh, I, I'll say that. It definitely, I, I, I can't see anything higher than that besides, you know, state championship. But other than that, I mean, I, I could put it up there. Because everybody keeps talking about it. Everybody keep talking about it, so every time they see me, that's the only thing everybody want to talk about. That 72 point game, that 72 point game. So I would, I would put that one up. My name is Judge Frank L. Sutton, and I played basketball at Forest Hill High School, and we won the overall state championship, the first of its acceptance here in Jackson in JPS in 1981. My high school basketball was played at Forest Hill High School in Jackson, Mississippi, under the leadership of Coach Shelby Watson. The sisters was Coach uh, Walter Robinson. Well, Westside is definitely unlike anything that we see now. It was a great community and still is. We had some great people there. Where I'm from in Westside, we call it subdivision number two. And uh, my father was an assistant principal at Westside. Matter of fact, he was a student there as a child. He grew. Went to college, came back, and Mr. Kelly Graham employed him as the assistant principal. And you know the assistant does all the work. Mr. Graham, you knew he was around because he wore a cologne called the Baron. And we could smell and tell where he was. But Westside as a whole is the epitome of what a community should really stand for. We had a first through ninth grade school, and all of us were like family. Even now today, me going to my job downtown as a judge, I go through the community just to see all the elders doing okay and seeing what the young people are doing, making sure the, the utilities are being done right. I just look out for my community, but we were raised, born, reared in a manner where we respected, we were taught the proper things to do, how to give back to the community and never forget where you come from. We went across the proverbial railroad track. When we left Fort Jackson uh, Westside in 1979, they closed it. 
we all had to leave to go to another school. And a lot of people went to Hines AHS in Utica and down there. But those of us that went to Forest Hill, we had to go across the proverbial railroad track. And when we got there, we were looking at something we never experienced before because we were from an all black school where you might have had 3% white. But then now we're going to a new area where we were like 95% white and the other percentage was us along with other persons. So it was uh, astonishing, yet we had to deal with it. We were prepared for it because our teachers at school, we had a mixed group of black and white educators and they all uh, did a lot of great things to get us ready for life. It seems as though they knew what life was gonna be, you know, become, and they prepared us quite well for it. MHSA changed the uh, classifications in 1981, mm -hmm. first year. And uh, that year, Forest Hill was uh, won the state championship. Sure did, the first overall, first overall state year. championship in the JPS. I, I, I respect Coach Billups and all those others that have come after. But the foundational aspect was built on the basis that Coach Shelby Watts was our coach. He was a towel chewer, and he beat that towel on the floor. But Coach Watts came to us in a way that I can, I, I use that right now in I, when I talk to young people and, and do a little motivation. He told us, uh, he came one day and asked my father, who's sister principal, say, look, can I speak to these gentlemen? Because we were ready to make a decision whether we were going to go to Heinz HS Utica and, or Forest Hill. Now, as far as here with the Rebels, we didn't care about that stuff back then. It didn't matter. We went to be educated and be athletic. We were scholar athletes. But my dad allowed uh, Coach Watts to come and speak to us, and he told us, I know that you've never met me, you've heard about me, in which we had, because everybody is anxious about going to the next level. And he said, but if you allow me to do three things in your life, we're going to be champions if you come to Forest Hill. He said, the first thing is preparation, P. Then he said, the next thing is organization, O. And then he said, the third is going to be quite hard. It's going to be discipline, P-O-D, preparation, organization, discipline. He said, if you allow me to implement these things in your lives, we're going to be champions. And it did occur that way. We, we went in, he prepared us. We went to the study hall. He was the driver's ed teacher. And Coach uh, Walter Robinson, the assistant, was the history teacher. We were, we were tight in our academics. Our parents were teachers and educators and people that labored within the school system. So, and everybody was held accountable. Your mother could straighten me and my mother could straighten you and my dad straightened everybody. It just was a community effort. But Coach Watts came and when he came, he made an awesome impact on each of our lives. Every one of us. No, none of us that have left there cannot say anything that's not right about Coach Well, He, he made, and he's dead now. But we, he uh, left and went to Central Hines, but we gave him the victories he never had before. Overall state championship, we were excited about it. Yeah. Then when they were singing, we are the champions of the world. You know what I'm saying? Did ACDC back in black. Right. Stuff like that. Right. You know, but it, it was a great time. It was a great time. Another one bites the dust. Right. That kind of stuff. <laughs> you know, those things ought to make you get excited. Yes, yeah, yeah, that kind of stuff. We had a plethora of awesome athletic individuals. Our number one player was Mark Coleman. Mark was a high-flying guy. And those that remember him posthumously in terms of athletics, he was drafted a sixth round by the L.A. Lakers. Mark could play above the rim, all state. And Mark, uh, the first, when Duke, Mark Allery played Duke at Valley, Coach Striblin was coaching. The first two of the game, they threw it up and Mark dunked the ball. And they, they really tentatively got close to winning that game, more close than any ever. Then we had Michael Ferguson, uh, Keith Ferguson, the Ferguson brother. They were our post guys. I was one of the power forward. I played center. I played, I was, I was the super six man, but I was an all-state football player, so I got in where I fit in. I didn't have to start, but most times I started because somebody was hurt, down or out. Then we had Kenneth Knight that shot a left-hand jump shot, and we had Joseph McKinley with our big man in the middle. He ended up going to Livingston University over in, I want to say, Alabama. The Ferguson brother played at Valley State. Mark went to Valley. And Danny Withers was our awesome point guard. He uh, now is a, uh, he, matter of fact, he went to Bell Haven as well and played there. Uh, he played under Coach Murphy down in Hines, down in, in uh, Raymond. But we all of the guys that were the starting five and the six guy, we all, man, we all, all of us, it, we worked together. Guess what now? We didn't just start at Forest Hill. We played at Westside Junior High. We played against Powell, Chastain, Rowan, uh, Blackburn. We played against everybody. Now, this is the funny part. Here I am, the big man. I'm about 6'3", 6'4", 260 pounds, 250. And I was all-state football. But then I, I was the leading scorer at, far, at West Side. But when, when I left there and began to play football, Mark, Mark and Ken, all those guys took over. Right. But we didn't get excited. We wasn't, we wasn't competitive where we were trying to knock one off. We were trying to push the other one up. You know, it's a, all, we, all we want to do was win. 
All we want to do is win. And we, do, we did it the right way. We did it the right way. A lot of great mentors, beginning from my uh, uh, high school coach, uh, Dr. Farrell, he was my high school coach. Uh, uh, coach Lafayette Stribling, uh, Coach Dave Whitney. And along the way, when I began to work camps and clinics, uh, uh, I began to meet a lot of coaches uh, across the country. So uh, I, those were my three primary mentors. Uh, Jay Bowen, the guy that coached me at East Central. Uh, so all those guys together, uh, gave me the, I guess, the nod to go ahead and start uh, my coaching career. What does a Luther Riley team look like? How are we able to get to this right here? Well, uh, I, I often say that the trophies are the byproduct of a lot of things uh, done right. So if you think of my team, number one, they'll be very well dressed, disciplined, teams that played really hard, a uh, team that executed, played smart, played together, uh, very selfless teams, uh, and teams that were very professional and classy in wins or losses. Uh, we made sure that our team uh, represented the fam their families, uh, the school, uh, and of course our program. So seeing a team, uh, and we had, you know, we got many accolades, just our, our presentation of our team. Uh, we wanted to look like a college team coming out. And, and most of our guys aspired to go to college, and uh, we just wanted to give them that, that uh, outlook and perception that, hey, we are a college team. Out of these five state championships, uh, who, you know, let's kind of rank them, one through five, <laughs> them, if you will. Like, you know, talk to me about each team and some players and, and different things like that. Well, my very first championship uh, will probably be my, uh, I'm not gonna say, best, but I'm going to say because it's your first, you know, it really resonated with me from this perspective. We had a team that we had maybe one player that was Division I, uh, a lot of the role players, but they had bought into our concepts and visions and things, and we beat a team, and we beat a lot of teams, and the team we beat for the championship had three pros on it. They were ranked 17th in the country had six Division I players on it. So the message that I, I, I got from that, and of course we conveyed to our team, is that it doesn't matter how big, how small, how, if you work hard, work smart, work together, uh, and, and just stay with what we're doing, you can be successful, not only on the basketball court, but in life as well. And that was my main message to make sure that life after basketball was the thing that we uh, tried to instill in our young men. Let's go back to that first championship. You know, you said you beat the team. Who was that team? I'm not afraid to say that was Lanier High School. Okay. <laughs> Thomas Billups and the Lanier Bulldogs. No, I'm just teasing. Coach Billups is a great friend of mine and uh, he and I competed, very professional. I love Coach Billups. His son and I went to school together. Uh, uh, but when we got on the court, we were really, really at each other's throat. So, uh, but I knew they was gonna come in hard, tough, uh, hard nosed, tough. And of course, they had Monty Ellis, uh, had uh, uh, Bobby Clark, Charles Thomas, Isaac Wells, all those guys, Al Graham, and things like that. But what we did, uh, we focused on what we wanted to do, uh, how we wanted to uh, strategize, and how we wanted to beat this team. And certainly we had a uh, ninth grader to come in and we, of course, emphasized offensive rebounding and uh, the game was tight and uh, there was a missed shot. And of course, Jarvis uh, Williams got to put back uh, with about a minute to play in the game to put us up for the victory. So that was a sweet uh, uh, win and sweet championship for us, being our first one. Well, our second one was even sweeter because, you know, being a country boy, unknown and, uh, they thought it was, uh, I guess, not necessarily luck, but it, it wasn't, you know, it just happened, you know, it just by happenstance. So what happened, we had to show, not only Jackson, but we had to show the entire state that uh, we were for real. So uh, we had those guys coming back, and certainly uh, uh, Monte Ellis averaged close to 30 that year, and we held them to seven shots. 
Not, not seven points, seven shots. And of course, uh, our team executed the game plan. And of course, I had to show Coach Billups who the man was then at that point. So we came in and not only spanked him once, but spanked him twice. So uh, that kind of uh, put a staple in my coaching career, uh, I guess locally that, hey, he kind of know what he's doing. So, uh, but we all worked hard, Coach uh, Billups and uh, of course, uh, Coach Brent and myself and all the other coaches in Jackson, we worked hard and wanted what was best for our student athletes. Our fourth one was with, uh, of course, uh, uh, Scotty Harrelson and that group. And that was probably the group with the most character. Uh, although we molded the other teams into what we want, but those student athletes, they won uh, 22 games in a row. Uh, we lost, we had Lanier up at Lanier uh, in the, some tournament, uh, maybe Christmas tournament, and uh, they came back and beat us because they thought they was good. You know, we had a, uh, we were preseason number one, and certainly uh, after that game, I didn't say a word. They knew that they had let each other down and certainly uh, they didn't lose another game that year throughout the entire state championship and the Grand Slam. Uh, but thanks to one of the newspaper guys who uh, is my good friend now, uh, they counted us out. They said we didn't have a chance to beat this team in New Hope in Columbus. We talking about New Hope. We in Jackson, Mississippi, man. We, 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 get, we fighting every night against whoever we play. Uh, because everybody is bringing their best game. So Ty Kelly, I'm not ashamed to uh, put him out there. Ty Kelly said we didn't have a chance of beating New Hope. They were going to beat us by 20, 10 or 20. Uh, well, uh, I think they may have scored 40 points in that game. We beat them by 27 or 28 in the Grand Slam. Uh, and the coach at Ole Miss, not Kermit Davis, his dad said, uh, that's a college team. They ran like a college team, uh, Coach Davis Sr. So, uh, so certainly we went ahead and uh, with those guys, you know, Scotty Harrison, uh, Carl Blair, uh, Emory Kelly, Jalen Courtney, uh, uh, all those guys, Marcus Hooten, uh, I mean, uh, such a, 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 a Jonathan Lewis, an array of good team, a good team, good players, good talent, and good kids, on, you know, to uh, supplement it all. You know, in every coach's career, you always have the, the highs, but you have your lows. You know, so, you know, you were here 11 seasons. Uh, talk to me about that team that you just felt like underachieved, that should have won a state championship, should have done better, but just for whatever reason, didn't get it done. Well, uh, I was here 11 seasons, but I, I played for nine championships. Well, I went to the champ went to the Coliseum nine straight times, uh, played for six. Well, uh, you know, in, anytime you lose seniors and things like that, I'm not going to say any of them underachieved because, you know, every year we were there. Uh, my first two years, my first year, I would say we didn't necessarily underachieve, but I had a talented group and I was new. So it was just, you know, coming behind a great Coach Brenton and, and, of course, Coach Chuck and Coach Anderson. Uh, coming behind those guys, man, I had to prove myself. So uh, I'm not going to say that was... Uh, uh, unnecessarily underachievement, but it, what it was, it was a, it was a wake up call for me. Uh, it hurt so bad when I lost my first year against Jim Hill. I mean, my principal, Mr. Red, who's my number one man, he, I, I missed work for about a week after that. He said, coach, the song is, is up. You can come on to work now. You just continue to you just work hard because he really supported me. I was really crushed because I thought there was a team uh, that was gonna make it. I had Justin Reed, who was an absolute animal. When I say animal, he was an animal. God rest his soul, but uh, never had a problem with him at all. So, uh, but there were some kids on that team that, you know, wasn't, hadn't bought in 100% like a Justin had. So we had some shortcomings there. So to be a champion means that you have a bunch of special student athletes and, uh, and certainly, uh, I don't have any regrets. And, uh, you know, I enjoy my tenure here at Provine and, I, and Jackson Public School was, has always been my number one district.